Okay, so tonight's our half moon lunar observance night. And uh, of course, the main thing that comes to my mind is uh, uh, today we uh, went into town and and uh, uh, performed a cremation ceremony for for uh, Metika, uh, who passed away last week. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's always. I mean, part of the uh, you know, the life of the monastery or the rhythm of the monastery uh, is uh, is is being a part of different kind of life cycles. Um, it's like we did a dedication earlier this week for um, Orn and uh, Evan's newborn child, um, and uh, you know, so from birth to all the various things that mark a, a human life, and uh, and death is a part of. Uh, uh, part of a human life, uh, so to um, being a part of that and observing it and and uh, doing um, chanting, dedication of blessings. Um, but in particular, I think it's helpful to be reflecting. Um, this is uh, that's the. The nature of the the Buddha's teaching is that that the Buddha wants us to be reflecting on all of the you know, all of the different elements of of our existence and to understand them and uh, and it's that understanding and clear vision, clear understanding that that uh, uh, gives us gives us freedom, gives us, gives us a um, uh, solidity or stability. Um, um, and that was certainly the, uh, say the case with, with, with Metika, because we were, we went in for really quite a long time, over a month. Uh, when she was sick in the uh, uh, acute care facility, and uh, you know, pretty much going on in on a daily basis, uh, especially toward the end, and, and uh, sharing, sharing time, sharing space, giving support. And I think one of the Things that was striking with with Metika was that um, there didn't seem to be any um, fear, trepidation, concern, worry uh, around uh, around her impending death. It was very clear um, that that's where it was all going. And uh, she made a conscious uh, decision um, at one point to uh, to stop dialysis, and so it's enough's enough. Uh, and then just let the natural processes of the of the body take its course. Uh, and 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 she never. Uh, Seem to, you know, have a uh, uh, didn't second thoughts about that, or um, and it wasn't that she was, um, say, in aversion, uh, even though that's that was her uh, 
as a, that was her default option in life. I mean, for, that's why she had the name Metika, was to say one, one with Metta, and she was an aspiration to live up to, when she made the effort to do that. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but it was really quite striking how that was very much not the case uh, uh, in, in her later days and, and that uh, um, and she wasn't seeking any and seemed to be in need of any distraction or uh, uh, propping up in any way it was it was, it was quite quite inspiring really um, to to see that uh, that because uh, it does um, um, say fear of fear of death is a pretty ordinary um, um, emotion. Um, they uh, uh, even if people try to uh, uh, kind of, you know, say deny that or put up a brave front, it's like the um, think of. Uh, Woody Allen's comment around around death. He said, "I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want to be there when it happens." <laughs> and that's, which is, you know, it's a pretty common feeling. And, and, uh, and it, but it's something that that that, that the Buddha addressed. And uh, there was a a, a, a Brahmin. Uh, came to the Buddha and, and said that he felt that there was no one who um, you know, didn't have um, fear or was in terror of, of death. And the Buddha said, well, no, there's, there are people who, yeah, who live in fear and terror of death. And there are there are those that 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 aren't that don't have. And he said, "And who are the people who uh, live in terror and in fear of death?" And he said, "There's four different types of people." Uh, and the, uh, the first is 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 a one who um, still has. Desire, craving, fondness, uh, attachment uh, to sensuality, to to uh, um, you know, that seeking for seeking for distraction, seeking for excitement, seeking for pleasure, seeking uh, for s sensual and sti sensory stimulation, uh, that, that, that cra having that craving, right? and when. When, say, that person gets gets ill, has a, experiences a serious disease, or is approaching death, and then it's uh, then there is this fear: I'm I'm going to be separated from 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 my sensuality, from my opportunity to experience uh, pleasure, comfort, uh, 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 say excitement. Uh, Stimulation. So it's it's. Uh, but there's that. That's one person uh, who is uh, is lives in fear of death or has terror of death. Uh, and, the Buddha said, and then there's a person who who still has has uh, desire, craving, fondness, attachment, and to to the body. And they're identified with the body um, in terms of its its health or its uh, um, you know all of the different aspects of the body. And, you know, that's where <coughs> we build our identity. Um, you know, what 
whatever shape or form it is, or whatever, uh, 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 identity, uh, sexual identity, um, or just the actual yeah, life of the body, me having a body, me being a body. Um, and as long as that desire and attachment's there, then uh, there tends to be fear of death because of similarly, uh, yeah, some disease, some illness comes and I'm going to be separated from this, from this body. Um, and then that's the second, the third uh, person who still has fear of death is one who is um, realizes or recognizes that they, that they they haven't established themselves in 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 living in a in a good way, it's established in goodness and skillfulness, have um, harmed other people, who have taken advantage of other people, who have uh, created suffering for other people, and so there's a remorse and, and regret there. And, that, uh, um, and <laughs> the Buddha says, uh, as the, uh, and if there is a destination for those who haven't done anything good, who have done things which are, are, are harmful and detrimental to other, other beings or hurt them, uh, if there's a destination, um, that's where I'm going to be going. Uh, there's a sense of fear and terror. The last person, type, type person, type of person that the the Buddha pointed to as as being um, afraid and in terror of death is uh, one who still uh, is uncertain as to. Uh, what is a true teaching? What is a, a a true path in life? What is, you know, what's true? No, it's what's not true. What's beneficial? What's not beneficial? What is uh, is is a uh, a path of freedom? What is a, a the, uh, what is a, a a way out of of samsara? Uh, so. Uh, um, so if one is still uncertain, unsure, in, uh, stuck in doubt, um, then there's a, a, a feeling of, of uh, uh, remorse and, and, and a sense of a lack of ease. Um, because yes, I say if some illness or a death is approaching, then I still, I still don't understand what it was all about. Um, and uh, um, still living in confusion, so there's still fear, feel fear there. So of course, then the Buddha, as is his want, then uh, this is uh, there's four types of beings that are uh, are free from from. Uh, uh, from from fear, free from any terror, any any, any trepidation uh, towards towards death, and that's when. And it, of course, it's the uh, it's all around relinquishment, giving up of the uh, desire, attachment, uh, craving, fondness for for sensuality, for for recognizing that it's not that that. Uh, one can't experience anything pleasurable or interesting. You've got to make your, uh, in order to be free from death, you've got to learn how to live in the, in the dullness, drabest, dreariest possible way. That's, that's not how it works. It's just sort of understanding the limitation uh, of, of uh, the, the sense world, the sense realm. And, and the limitation of sensuality, um, that's, you know, recognizing, and that's one of, of course, it's you know, the basis, the basic aspect is impermanent. It's changing. It's unstable. It's uncertain. 
and it's, it's one of the reflections we always do at, at the time of death. That's, that's a, Anicca Vata Sankara, right? impermanent are all conditioned things. It's a, a fundamental truth that has to be reflected on, recollected, and, and brought into the heart. Um, um, a, uh, and a turning attention to uh, relinquishing desire, attachment, fondness, craving for the body. And in the same way, just recognizing that, that uh, when one sees the uh, limitations of the body, um, I mean, they. Uh, and again, it doesn't mean you don't look after it and you don't recognize that it can, can when we have, we have a body, we have um, uh, you know, all of our limbs working, we still have energy and we know we can, you can do, do a lot of good, you can accomplish a lot of, a lot of really useful things. And, and, but in the end, yeah, bodies are bodies and we need to, to recognize that they're, they need to be relinquished. Um, because it, uh, whether we relinquish them or not, they're they're going, and, and they have their limitations. And so, um, like for me, it's, it's over three weeks ago now since I uh, had that accident, and you know, I'm a, a lot, a lot better. But I still hurt. I still ache. It's just this. It is. Uh, uh, um, there's a limitation, and that's what bodies do. Um, so that uh, just recognizing the that, that natural uh, cycles of the body, natural limitations of the body. I'm not identifying with it, whether it's whether it's young or old or short or tall or male or female or you know attractive or whatever. All of those different elements of of, of body, how well it functions, how, uh, how how well it doesn't function. And it's just there's their bodies. And and there's a tremendous freedom in just seeing them in their true nature. And the same with with the uh, uh, recognizing that uh, yeah, there's an intrinsic brightness of heart that comes from establishing oneself in 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 in, in, in the good in in not harming others and being being helpful, being generous, being kind. Um, it affects one in a very different way than, than uh, say selfishness and cruelty. Uh, it just has a very different effect uh, and, and uh, leads to a, a sense of, of real stability, unshakability. Uh, and, and that is just incredibly precious. Yeah. And the same in just understanding that you know, there, yeah, there's, there are true teachings. There are, uh, there is the true Dhamma, and it's not in a, uh, um, how do you say, a, uh, sectarian or evangelical way. Uh, having to prop it up, it's just no. There's, there's truth, and and what accords with truth, and uh, truth doesn't have to advertise itself or prop itself up. It's just, this is this is the nature of truth, and it leads to, we uh, uh, align with truth, live with, in, in say, in a true way, uh, then there's just a natural. Um, 
stability, unshakability, lack of fear. And of course, it's just, it's not just thinking about it or, or uh, trying to, you know, trying to prop up thoughts, but it's more, it is a process of, of training and practice and a gradual, uh, yeah, gradual wearing away of, of the, obstacles within the heart and, and uh, it is just, you, know, you we've all we've all uh, seen the benefits or been everyone who's here is, is uh, or at least is interested in the in the benefits of recognizing okay I want to do something about about this human life and, uh, and but it's yeah. There's a whole process of uh, of of uh, you know, say purification of training, and, uh, uh, and the Buddha and the Buddha and all the great teachers talk about it all the time. It's the like Gajan Cha uh, saying, yeah, you just. It's the same in the same way that when you're growing some kind of plant or tree or fruit, uh, then you, you, you plant it, you look after it, you care for it, you water it, uh, you do all the right things, and then it grows quite naturally. Uh, or they say, think of the Buddha uh, and talking about. Uh, there's actually quite a few suttas where the Buddha talks about the uh, uh, like purification of of gold or refinement of gold, um, and, uh, uh, and and in different ways from different parts. But there's one in particular that comes to mind, or stick, sticks in my mind. And the Buddha talking about the. Um, in the same way that, that uh, uh, in refining of gold, there's, uh, there's, there, there's uh, uh, gross impurities that need to be dealt with, there's moderate impurities, and there's, there's you know, fine impurities that need to be uh, worked through for the gold in order for it to become, uh, become pure, to become malleable, to become luminous, to be radiant. And, and that, that there are these, uh, in the same way that, the, uh, say, the, the gross impurities for gold, or uh, like dirty sand and gravel and grit, and, and the uh, uh, moderate impurities, or the, uh, coarse, uh, uh, coarse sand and, and 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 grit, and then the fine impurities, just the uh, 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 this sort of fine sand and 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 black dust. Uh, it's just it's, you know, so it has to be has to be washed. It has to be washed over and over and over again, and cleaned and cleansed. Uh, and then uh, even after it's been washed all this time, we get all the, from the those coarse impurities and even the fine impurities out. Then it needs to be put into a cru crucible and heated. Uh, and then it's heated for a long time. You carefully um, follow that heating process and blow on it. And, uh, and, uh, and then finally the the different uh, uh, the fine dross is fine is 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 taken out and what's left is is the this is pure gold that can be can be uh, shaped into any kind of an ornament and looks beautiful it's it's easy to work with it's not brittle it's it's malleable and the, the mind is in, in the same way. 
and that they uh, have to course in impurities, uh, you know, just just the uh, um, yeah, yeah. impure acts of body, speech, and mind. Um, the say, uh, harming, taking advantage of, or you know, just coarse, coarse conduct of any kind, of, or coarse speech, coarse, coarse thoughts. And, uh, and say, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty ordinary, but uh, you know, in, in in the within a. a Ordinary culture, it's pretty standard uh, how people people live, and you, you get used to it. But it's I mean, you look at it from the possibility of of, of human life, and it's uh, you no, know, we we can do better than this, uh, and uh, it takes some restraint and and uh, attention to to. To you know, basically upping one's game, and, the, yeah. and, and then the uh, moderate impurities are just around the so the aspects of mind. Uh, say what's what's called so say like mitya sankapa, say wrong wrong intention, you know, thoughts of of. Uh, of sensuality, thoughts of, of of ill will, thoughts of harming, and so that's a, a, it's a moderate a need. We need to be training, working on that in different ways, of, uh, and then in the, uh, the the more refined or finer impurities that need to be. Dealt with in the mind, uh, um, thoughts of, uh, as the Buddha said, thoughts of caste, uh, identification with, um, say, social status, social position. Uh, in the Buddha's time, caste was, uh, and in say, even in modern India today, it's a, still is a uh, is a huge identity. Identification, uh, but yeah, one well, doesn't need to be in India to be um, thinking in terms of social position. So uh, the the uh, uh, status that one has or doesn't have, and compare oneself to others, uh, and, and that. Uh, Say even and say America, which sort of prides itself in being, being, uh, yeah, not having a, a class system. Uh, it's ridiculously stratified, stratified, um, and uh, you know, not. Uh, uh, and, it's, and it's easy to identify oneself with a particular social position, education, wealth or lack of wealth. And the other or another thing that the Buddha points to is a you know, it's a kind of refined identity, identification is with the say one's uh, with family and home, home kind of uh, home country, where one comes from, um, which is is uh, um, for uh, you know I think of myself. Um, I mean I haven't lived in Canada for fifty years, but if somebody asks me where I'm from, I'll say Canada. <laughs> <laughs> It's just that identification, uh, and there, uh, 
Americans are a bit different uh, in that, uh, like if, uh, if Americans travel somewhere right, and they're asked where they come from, you know, they'll, you know, they'll say, you know, California or Connecticut or Delaware. Nobody in the world knows where, <laughs> what a Delaware is. But, <laughs> but, but the, the identification is, is like somehow, uh, uh, yeah, this kind of exceptionalism of America is, is, is everybody knows who they are. And it's, uh, you know, it's an identity. You know, so that, uh, and of course with family, identification with family is very strong. Uh, and it doesn't, and again, it doesn't mean that when there's that one disregards or pushes away family. Uh, um, the Buddha has lots and lots of teachings around the, the uh, say, you know, different duties and responsibilities and, and uh, gratitude and appreciation. But still, there's, you know, if we create and build and hold on to our identity, that's who we are, then, then it, 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 it tags along with us and dogs us. Um, and is a source of suffering. And the uh, and so the, the the different elements of of our human condition that we that we identify with and uh, just learning how to reflect in ways that give us the opportunity for you know, relinquishment and release. Uh, so that as we mm, mm, pay attention to that relinquishment and releasing of these different identities. And the Buddha said, still, the mind isn't, isn't settled, isn't stable, isn't steady. It needs to be reflected on, it needs to be cultivated, it needs it. The, the willingness to to see the that movement of mind and tendency to becoming the the grasping after after the uh, you know, a vicha and becoming uh, that. Uh, those are those are just so deep within the, within the heart, um, and it's a it's part of a whole process of refining and settling. It's not so that he says even the even when the mind becomes peaceful and steady without continue training, it's only steady when you hold it together with, with effort. Uh, and, and it's not through clear seeing or through clear relinquishment. You know, so one is yeah, sort of forcing the mind to be still, forcing the mind to be steady. You know, of course, it's what we do as we as we begin to practice, but the reality is is you know there is a place beyond that effort, and there is a place beyond that 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 that, that intention uh, intentional holding. Uh, there's a release that's possible, uh, and that's the 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 that that when the Buddha speaks of say, cessation and ending. It's a better, maybe a better say, perception or translation is sort of the, just like non-arising. The non-arising of 
desires, the non-arising of attachment, the non-arising of agitation. Uh, it's just not, we're not feeding the process. Um, and we're looking after that process of stilling and, and settling. Um, so that, that uh, yeah, it's, this is an ongoing uh, ongoing training, ongoing exploration of the of the Buddhist path, and it yeah it has a point uh, in that the 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 you know we all we all want to ex experience a sense of peace and and uh, freedom from say freedom from fear. It's why we named a Bayagiri a Bayagiri. It's the fearless, fearless mountain. Uh, and, uh, and it's a place of security, a place of refuge. And it's, you know, we want, of course, external places of security and refuge are really important. But the internal place of security and refuge is just priceless. And so just to be uh, encouraging ourselves to uh, yeah, keep practicing, keep training, be patient, work with the with this human condition, and recognize that there is a yeah, there, there is a, a a transcendence of this. There is a there is a there is a way through this. So offer that for reflection.